Hey guys, what's up? My name's Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. And today we're gonna kind of do a tech review here that's a little bit different than what I normally do here on the channel. Um, I'm actually, believe it or not, recovering from walking pneumonia. Uh, a few weeks ago, I ended up in the hospital. I'll put a picture on screen now. And uh, ended up with uh, some pneumonia, not COVID-19 related. Uh, and it's really uh, been kind of a long road of recovery. I've been feeling like I haven't had properly working lungs now for probably... <laughs> Uh, almost three or four weeks. And so um, that's sidetracked all of my attempts to try to get back into YouTube and do some more reviews. It's been just kind of a terrible year of health and, and trying to recover from a lot of different illnesses and stuff. And then, and then I got pneumonia. So uh, in any case, I decided I'm not going to wait around to, for my body to get healthy. I'm going to go ahead and heal, but let's go ahead and do a tech review of some technology that I'm going to be using here for the channel moving forward. And uh, this is something that would, would appeal to those of you who uh, might be interested in doing kind of your own channel uh, or just interested in some of the applications that this can do. So this is the Feel World Live Pro L1. And uh, it's basically a switcher, uh, if you know what that is, but they're calling it a multi-format video mixer is what they have it uh, labeled as. Um, I've also got here on the desk a Focusrite uh, this is, you know, controlling this XLR microphone that I have right here, providing it with power. And then both of these units are going into my laptop. And what you're seeing on screen now is what I see actually here on my laptop, which is kind of this multi-view uh, angle where I can look at all the different camera angles and, uh, and choose from different sources. And we're going to talk about everything that this can do and offer you as a content creator. So let's jump into the review. <music> Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and talk about all of the different hardware that we have here and then how it all kind of comes together uh, and, and creates this video that you're seeing here on screen. Um, well, the first thing, the simplest uh, thing to just kind of start with here is the microphone. You guys know what a microphone is? This microphone has an analog signal, my voice going into the microphone, and then it plugs into the focus right here, which is an audio interface, which converts the analog signal of my voice and microphone into a digital signal, which then comes around and plugs into this computer and my computer is recording all of the audio. So that's what's going on here. Now, the Live Pro L1 does have the ability to process audio. It's got two audio, uh, I, I should say, one audio input source here and one audio output source. And unfortunately, it's an eighth inch input and eighth inch uh, output. So you cannot plug in an XLR or a quarter inch jack into this unit in order to process your audio. So in my opinion, if you're looking for some sort of um, unit that does both video HDMI processing and uh, high-end audio processing with XLR inputs or quarter inch inputs, this is not your unit. You should skip this unit and move on from this video and go find something else that has better audio processing. However, if you're planning on using this unit in tandem with an audio interface or some sort of other uh, audio processing hardware, then this is a good unit that you should definitely consider. And actually, I find that most people who are content creators and YouTubers already have probably some sort of you know audio uh, processing unit uh, or a USB microphone that plugs directly into the laptop and they don't need really the audio capabilities that this unit provides or the the lack of features that it doesn't have so this unit here the live pro l1 in my opinion I recommend that you only purchase it if you already have a, an audio solution for uh, your existing microphone setup uh, or you have a USB microphone or something like that uh, so that's kind of one of my first caveats with this unit. Now, that said, if you don't have an audio interface or um, don't have any sort of audio solution, um, or maybe you do want to use this uh, to process some of your audio, this does have on the side of it uh, a couple of audio connectors here, an audio in and an audio out in case you need it. Um, so it's there. I just don't think it's a great um, you know, unit for processing audio. There's much better ways of doing it, but it's there if you want it, but you've been warned by me, don't buy this for, you know, heavy audio processing. It's probably not the correct, the correct setup for you. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in though to uh, not just the audio setup here, but what else we have this unit doing. We've got a camera right here, as you guys can see. Uh, this is the camera that's looking at the Live Pro and I've got the multi-feed still kind of showing here so you guys can make sense of it all. So this camera is looking at 
got the Live Pro here on my desk. And then there's a camera that's pointed at me here, kind of the wide angle camera, the second shot that sees everything. And both of those cameras are plugged in with micro HDMI out into standard HDMI. Uh, actually, they're right over here into the unit. I'll see if I can flip this over without messing things up. So you can see those plugged in right there into the unit, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. So I've got two uh, video signals coming into the unit that it's processing. And uh, then I have an HDMI out. Now this HDMI out can be used for a couple of things. One, if you're not happy with the tiny little uh, screen that it has here, and it is really tiny, I would say it's probably like two inches by two inches, roughly. It's not very big. If you're not happy with that, you can use this HDMI out to see the screen that you're seeing right now, which is this, you know, kind of multi-camera view. You can use that with an external monitor. So if you have an external monitor, a battery powered one, or, or even just an external monitor that you have set up that you want to use in order to have a larger preview screen with all of the different camera angles, you can use that HDMI out in order to have a larger monitor. Then again, maybe you don't really care about that and you just are happy to have kind of a little compact setup and this little tiny screen here on, is, is good enough for you. So that's fine, you can go ahead and do that. Um, now, what I have on my current setup, and I'll explain why here in a moment, I have this HDMI going from the Live Pro out into a video capture card that converts this uh, video signal into something that my computer can read. And it kind of turns this unit into a webcam of sorts. It turns that HDMI video feed into a kind of a webcam feed. That's how my computer is interpreting it. Now that said, the unit itself doesn't require you to have a video capture card. You can go straight from USB 3 on the side of this unit. And I'll show you that here. You can see that there into a laptop. Uh, but the reason uh, why I'm using the video capture card is because I didn't have the right cord available. I have this cord right here uh, that's USB-C into U I'm sorry, USB-C on this side, which would plug into my computer, to USB on this side and plug into this unit. The problem is this unit here uh, needs a USB 3.0 cord from end to end to, to work properly. And so this cord actually unfortunately did not work and I have to go home and I have to get um, a different cord that will work with this unit in order for my laptop to recognize it, you know, as kind of a webcam setup. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm stuck with using the HDMI out into the video capture card into my laptop. Um, now that said, with this multi-camera view, I can program this unit, go into the settings and tell this HDMI out to, to not be this preview screen like you're seeing uh, right now, but I can instead make it feed out as though it's, you know, selecting one camera angle. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the menu settings here. And we're going to go to HDMI. And where it says output, uh, and it's set up to preview right now, we're going to select that and put PGM. And now suddenly, it's changed what, what that HDMI output is doing. Now we have a program mode as opposed to a preview mode. So now what I can do is I can switch between uh, these two different cameras by using this little switcher slider right here. And you can see here, I can kind of control the, the speed or the effect of the fader with this little knob right here. Now, I don't want to go into everything, but there is a way in which over here you can switch the, the kind of effect that you're getting. It doesn't have to be a fade. There's other effects that this unit can, can process and use. And there's ways in which you can also just have it where you're selecting a button as opposed to using this switcher and then just have the unit itself apply the effect in a certain amount of time that you designate. So if you want the effect to take a half a second or a second or two seconds, you can program the unit to do that and then just hit the buttons of the different camera angles that you want. Right now, I have it set up so that I just have two different camera angles and then I can just slide this in between both of the cameras uh, to create that fade effect. Now. I really like this because what this is going to allow me to do is to do reviews in the future where instead of having to set up one camera and kind of uh, 
go uh, back and forth using that one camera between a face shot and a product shot, I can just kind of do everything in one take with this and just kind of flip the switch between the product view and the view that looks at me as the presenter. And just, it, be, it makes me much, much more uh, efficient. Um, and I can also just get lots of different camera angles. I still have two other HDMI sources um, that uh, I can use. So two other HDMI sources could be um, an iPhone that I have using an HDI, HDMI converter. So I could use my iPhone as a camera. I could have um, a video input source from a Blu-ray player or a TV or anything else that's got an HDMI out I could have coming into uh, this unit and then using it as one of my camera angles uh, but right now again I just have it set up with these two camera angles set up so that's what it can do um, and uh, I'm super excited to kind of explore uh, the potential of this unit um, one of the reasons why I got this unit is I'm actually in the process right now of um, working with my employer to do some sort of kind of a podcast or video podcast. Um, and so we want to have kind of multi-camera angles and it's a podcast where I'm probably going to be producing it. So there is going to be some involvement where I'm actually going to be there and I won't be able to produce it in post, or at least it would be too tedious to produce it in post. And so what this allows me to do is to provide some of those production points in real time. I can switch between the camera angle in real time and not have to worry about, um, you know, choosing the camera angles in post-production because I've done it while it's actually, you know, being recorded. So that's what I love about this unit. Um, now let's talk about how this compares uh, in price against something like the ATEM Mini Pro or the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. Uh, it's about the same. They're both ballpark right around $300. Um, the difference uh, is that there are some differences. Let's talk about you know some advantages that this unit has uh, in my opinion I've, I've used both I've actually been using now for uh, live broadcast purposes the Blackmagic Aiden Mini Pro now for about two months and um, it is not nearly as user-friendly as this unit is um, that said it can do a whole lot more but it's not nearly as user-friendly so if you're just someone who's kind of a consumer level a person who wants to put out some great content on YouTube you probably don't need the complexity that comes with the ADA Mini Pro. Um, this is probably going to be something that suits you just fine. The other thing that's great about this unit is we've got this screen. Uh, again, it's not a very big screen. It's only about two inches by two inches. But the advantage of this unit then is that you don't have to buy an external uh, monitor. Now, obviously, if you decide you uh, want a bigger monitor, you've got that capability, you can do that. Um, just like the A10 Mini Pro has, you have the HDMI out where you can have an external monitor, um, an external display that, it, that it's powering or feeding. Um, this unit can do that as well, but the advantage that this unit has is that it does have that built-in monitor, which is great if you're kind of wanting to have a very portable or compact setup, uh, or if you just don't want to spend the money on an external monitor, you've got that advantage. So that's kind of nice. Um, the other thing that I kind of like about this unit compared with with the ADEM Mini Pro is you've actually got this physical slider here that you don't have on the Blackmagic unit. Uh, and so this just gives me a kind of an extra layer of that manual control uh, that's a little, that feels in one sense a little bit more professional, even though the Blackmagic is actually, in my opinion, the more professional unit. I just kind of like having that slider there. And it's nice because I can kind of slide between the two different camera angles without even hitting a button. I can be looking right at the camera and I can slide to a, a second camera angle and then right back to the other camera angle without ever having to really like take my eyes off the camera. I can just have kind of my hand right on the slider the entire time uh, to facilitate facilitate those transitions so that's kind of nice that's something that uh, the black magic doesn't offer the other thing is that just the button configuration on this compared to the black magic is, is much much more uh, simple it's just it's very uh, simplified and you basically get just the bare necessity controls on the unit uh, whereas with the black magic there's a lot of different buttons and you could accidentally hit the wrong thing and it you know brings you into a menu or or a certain mode or does something uh, in real time that you're you know trying to figure out how to get out of um, so that certainly happened to me with the ATEM uh, Mini Pro uh, the unit that I have is the Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro uh, but that's not a whole lot different in terms of the user experience compared to the Blackmagic ATEM Mini so I would say that you know everything that I'm saying here kind of applies uh, to both of those um, 
Now, where, where does the black magic, you know, offer you some advantages? Uh, well, it's just a more professional unit. Um, it's got some software that in my opinion is a little bit more professional, especially when it comes to the audio uh, aspect of things. You actually have with the black magic software that kind of looks like a, um, a digital mixer and uh, some capabilities there to uh, mix the audio and to delay audio and to delay channels and audio sources uh, to different timings and different frame rates. Um, so that way, if you have an audio or a video signal or an audio signal that's coming in that's faster or slower, you can retime everything. So there's a lot more controls and, and specifically a lot more controls with audio. And since um, since the other applic, I have the Blackmagic 8 m Mini Pro that I'm using for that other professional application. And since we're processing live bands like in real time and feeding out those uh, video feeds live to the internet. Uh, it's really important that we have that audio control and uh, that's where the black magic just is a, is a much better unit um, and much more professional. You have much more control over everything, even up to and including the audio. Whereas with this, you just don't have a lot of those more advanced and professional features. That said, for this application, like what we're doing right now, this is great. I love this unit, uh, the simplicity of it. And you're gonna be seeing me, well, you won't be seeing this unit a whole lot, uh, but I'll be using this unit a whole lot for uh, upcoming videos as I review products and whatnot. So just kind of wanted to show you guys here the simplicity of this unit. Um, how it works, how easy it is. I've literally uh, been opened the box of this unit about an hour ago, and it's taken me less than an hour to start producing this video that you're seeing right now. So it's that simple and easy to use. It's pretty much plug and play. And uh, if you're someone who's looking for the ability to kind of have multi-camera set up in a very simple and easy to use way, this is the unit that you should be checking out. So so anyways, that's about it for today. I just wanted to show you guys my new toy uh, and hopefully I'm healthy enough here. I've, I've only got a couple more days of some antibiotics and steroids and breathing treatments before I'm done, hopefully with uh, pneumonia. And then I'll be uh, trying to get back into the gym and doing some reviews for you guys soon. So thanks for watching. My name is Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. And let's flip this just one more time because it's so much fun. We'll catch you next time.